Deputy Licensing Committee. Um, my name is Samantha Woon and I'm the host for this morning's meeting. I'm Democratic Services Officer. The meeting is being recorded and streamed live through the Council's website. In the event of any technical issues or breakdown in communication, either myself or the licensing officer will attempt to invite you to rejoin using the email address you've provided. Alternatively, please try to rejoin by clicking on the link sent to you by myself or the licensing officer. If anyone loses connectivity, the hearing will stop until the party has rejoined. And I'll pass you over to our chair, Councillor Penny Matthews. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Councillor Penny Matthews. I'll be chairing this morning. I'm now going to introduce um, Mr Davis, who's our legal representative, who will explain to you the way things will be run. Good morning. I'm Craig Davis, uh, one of the legal officers here at the local authority. Um, so my intro is welcome to this statutory licensing committee, which is being held under the Licensing Act 2003 and the Hearing Regulations 2005, as permitted by the local authorities, uh, Coronavirus Meetings Wales Regulations 2020. During this committee, uh, consideration will also be given to the Institute of Licensing Protocol for License Applications, hearings under the Licensing Act 2003, uh, and with reference to the April 2018 guidance and the local authorities, authorities policy as reviewed in July 2018. You'll be aware, having received copies of the report that links to each of what the legislations I've just mentioned, um, have been included within this committee report. <clears throat> um, I think it's already been done, but please ensure that you mute all of your microphones and remember to only unmute them when you are called to speak and don't interrupt persons while speaking as the procedure I will shortly set out. Um, this committee will hear and take into consideration all relevant parties' views on the application being made. Although you have already received a notice of hearing and on that notice, um, you'll note that all calls the licensing objectives and relevant to the purpose of this committee. This purpose, this committee's purpose is to not to scrutinise the past or future decisions which are not relevant to this application as per the objectives. <clears throat> All applications will be considered on their own merits and in, in accordance with the licence and authorities licensing policy. I say this because if persons sway away from the purpose as set out, I will respectfully interject and query the direction and relevance of the comment made as per what I've just said. As Ms. Moon has set out, if you have any issues with your bandwidth, um, in that if the audio or visual becomes um, slow, I would recommend that you turn off the video uh, and stay on this uh, call with audio only. So to set out the summary of the procedure, um, in some ways, Mr. Hole, this is for yourself because um, you're not represented, are you? Um, and also for information in relation to the representatives as to when you will and will not be able to ask questions. <clears throat> so the matter will set out with um, the officer will read the report and the council members will be able to ask questions. Ordinarily, then um, responsible authorities would read out their representations. But as you'll note from the report, um, no representations have been made by responsible authorities. Um, so therefore the councillors won't be asking any of those questions. We would swiftly then move on to the public representations, um, which should specifically be relevant to the licensing objectives. Now, I'm aware that Certainly one written representation has been received and then there is a request from two persons named on that document for another person to speak on their behalf. We'll deal with that when we get to that section, but specifically your representation should be to develop what is already been put in writing, um, not to 
to add new new representations to what is already in person writing. I hope you understand that and aware of that from the information already provided in the notice. The council members will then be able to ask you questions and then it is the applicant, Mr Hull's opportunity to make their his application and the councillors will ask him questions. After that, that is when there will be an open discussion where anyone can ask any other party a question, but that will be through the chair via you raising your hand. You'll note that on the top line of this call, if you look to the far right, it says the red box would leave. Um, five boxes, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five boxes to the right, it says reactions. If you click on that box, um, a gold hand will appear. You click that gold hand and therefore, and then around your, your screen that you see, you'll have a, a, a gold outline. That will show that you've raised your hand. That will notify the chair that you are waiting to speak. Only then wait for the chair to ask you to ask the question. Um, <clears throat> after that section, ordinarily, um, the relevant authorities, mainly the South Wales Police, would have had a final opportunity uh, to comment on anything they could. As you're aware, South Wales Police have not made a representation in this matter. So therefore, it would be for the applicant, Mr Hull, to make any final submissions. It is not for the representations to come back onto Mr Hull when he makes his final concluding representations. Um, the chair would then close the committee to the public and the applicant and we will go, the legal officer, myself and the members and Ms Woon will go into private deliberations uh, for any legal advice they may wish from me and for the represents, uh, sorry, the members to, to make their decisions. <clears throat> if no further information or deliberations is needed, uh, a decision will likely be sent out within five days as of today. So I note Mr Hull has nodded, um, therefore to all other parties, I hope this procedure is set out clearly and you understand and therefore I'll pass you back to uh, Ms. Samantha Wu. Thank you Mr Davis. Um, if I could call out the names of all present, um, I believe we have Mr Ryan Hull. Could you confirm that you can hear us okay Mr Hull? All good, thank you. Thank you. And then we have Mr Ian Evans. Are you able to hear us okay Mr Evans? Yes, yeah, you can hear Thank you. Thank you. And then we have Ms. Alison Lloyd. Are you able to hear us? Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. I shall now pass you over to our chair, Councillor Penny Matthews, who will um, introduce members, <coughs> ask members to introduce themselves and officers present. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Um, as I told you, I'm chairing this morning. My name is Councillor Penny Matthews. The councillors that are with me this morning are Councillor Philpott. Um, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Good morning, committee. Good morning, uh, invited uh, representatives. I'm Cheryl Philpott and I'm a councillor for Skeppy. Thank you. And councillor Paul Lloyd. Yes, good morning, all. Good morning, Chair. Yes, uh, I'm councillor Paul Lloyd, one of the councillors for Bonamine Ward. Thank you. Thank you. And their offices this morning are. Um, hello again, uh, Samantha Woon. I'm Democratic Services Officer. And Craig Davis from, from the Legal Department. Hi, oh, yeah, I'm Rachel Lewis-Moore. I'm from Licensing. I'll be delivering the report today. You're on mute. That was Mr Vaughan Lewis, uh, one of the Licensing uh, Lead Officers. OK, so thank you. So we we'll start proceedings. Could I have any apologies for absence, please? No apologies, Chair. Thank you. Any disclosures from any of the councillors, prejudicial or per personal? No, thank you. So um, what I'm going to do now is ask the officer to outline the report to us uh, and the officer will take us through step by step each piece of the report. Thank you, Mr. Osman. Okay, thank you, Chair. Good morning, all. 
Okay, we're here today for an application for a new premises license, which was received by the authority on the 14th of February 2022 for the Green Room, uh, Copper Bay, Oyster Mouth Road, Swansea. The application proposes supply of alcohol, Monday to Sunday, 8 a.m. to 2300 hours, late night refreshment, Monday to Sunday, 2300 hours to 2330, and opening hours, Monday to Sunday, 0800 2330. A copy of the application application is attached to Appendix A, at page six of this report for your ease of reference. The premises are situated in the coastal park area of the Copper Bay development. The premises seeks to operate as a cafe, bar, restaurant. An aerial plan is attached to Appendix P, that's page 34 of this report. Also, a list of the licensed premises in the area is attached to Appendix B1, and that's at page 35. The Licensing Act 2003 contains four licensed objectives, namely the prevention of crime and disorder, public safety, the prevention of public nuisance and the protection of children from harm. Each of these objectives is of equal importance and the application must demonstrate how they are to be promoted. Conditions which are consistent with the operating schedule and will be attached to the licence if granted are attached to Appendix C and that's page 37 of this report. A representation has been received from one other person who is also representing two other persons. A copy of this representation is attached to Appendix D and that's page 39 of this report. In considering this application, members should have regard to the current statement of licensing policy that can be found at the following link. Members should also have regard to the relevant parts of the current statutory guidance issued by the Home Secretary in April 2018. In particular relevance this application, the following paragraphs from Chapter 16 are specified below. 16.6. As a result of deregulated changes that have amended the 2003 Act, no licence is required for the following activities. Live music. No licence permission is required for a performance of unamplified live music between 0800 and 2300 hours or any day on any premises. A performance of amplified live music between 0800 and 2300 hours on any day on a premises authorised to sell alcohol for consumption on those premises, provided the audience does not exceed 500. Recorded music. No licence permission is required for any playing of recorded music between 0800 and 2300 hours on any day on a premises authorised to sell alcohol for consumption on those premises, provided that the audience does not exceed 500. In relation to licence conditions, live music or recorded music. Any existing licence conditions or conditions added on a determination of an application for a premises licence or club premises certificate which relate to live music or recorded music must remain in place, but are suspended between the hours of 0800 and 2300 hours on the same day where the following conditions are met. At the time of the music entertainment, the premises are open for the purposes of being used for sale or supply of alcohol for consumption on the premises. If the music is amplified, it takes place between an audience of no more than 500 people and the music takes place between 0800 and 2300 hours on the same day. Whether a licence condition relates to live or recorded music would be a matter of fact in each case. In some instances, it would be obvious that a condition relates to music and will be suspended. For example, during performances of live music, all doors and windows must remain closed. In other instances, it might not be so obvious. For example, a condition stating, oh, sorry, uh, would it be suspended so far to relate to music to you know, 800 and 20 on the same day to no one's up to 500, but the condition would continue to apply if there was regular entertainment after 2200 hours. More general license conditions, e.g. those relating to overall management of potential noise nuisance that are not specifically related to the provision of entertainment, for example, signage asking patrons to leave quietly, would continue to have effect. A link to the full guidance can be found at the below. This decision must be based on the individual merits, merits of this application, the representations received, with a view to promoting the license objectives outlined in paragraph 5 of the report. In arriving at the decision, members should also have regard to the relevant provisions of policy and guidance as previously provided. Reasons must be provided for any departure from the policy or guidance. In reaching the decision, the committee must have regard to the representations, take such steps mentioned below, if any, as it considers appropriate for the promotion of the license objectives. So A, grant the licence subject to conditions that reflect the operating schedule, modified to such extent as the authority considers appropriate for promotion of the existing licence and objectives. Certain regular entertainment under Licence Act 2003 as amended has been deregulated. Where entertainment is deregulated but licence activities continue to take place on any premises, 
any licence conditions imposed on the grant of licence in respect of any regulated entity will be suspended. Any mandatory conditions relevant to the licence, so be excluded any licence activities to which the application relates, refused a person uh, to specify personal licence to the premises supervisor or reject the application. In view of the representation received, the licence and subcommittee's instructions are requested. Thank you very much. Um, do either of the councillors have any questions, please, for the officer? No, thank you, Chair. No, thank you very much. So um, we go now to... Which one do we go to first? Do you to go to Mr. It's to the, the representatives now. Yeah, so <coughs> the lady first. Miss Lloyd. Um, Miss Lloyd has written the letter, so... Miss Lloyd, do we have, are you happy for us to come to you first, please? You're on mute, Miss Lloyd. Thank you. This is fine, thank you. Thank you. If you'd like to explain to us um, your complaint, uh, well, first of all, what I really would like to say is I think committee members that we should have a stay of this meeting. There's huge concern in Victoria Quay, the impact this is going to have on the whole of our lives. Um, I'm not saying that we're against having something for the community on the coastal park in the form of the cafe. We're not, and I certainly am not, but I am asking for a stay because I feel it's been rushed through and Rich is well aware of this. There's five management committees there in Victoria Quay and I wrote an initial representation on behalf of everybody and purely by rushing it through the following day, omitted to say that and only mentioned two other people because they particularly wanted their names mentioned as Elsie and without email. I feel that not enough time has been given at all for us to prepare for this hearing. Um, Ms Lloyd, shall I make a comment on, on that point? Yes, thank you. Um, Obviously, you have received the notice of hearing. Yeah. And you were given um, the standard. Uh, well, you, you were advised that the committee. So the application had been made and it was within the regulations, the time period that was passed. You provided your information as as everyone else could have. Um, Apologies, but effectively you, you've given your information. If other people haven't complied with what was what was put out there, um, there's nothing more we can do. Um, I, we, I'm aware that the officers have given additional time to the other persons who are going to, if you like, piggyback your representation. Um, in fact, the licensing officers have been very accommodating. there. I would say that as a lay person, I wasn't aware of the procedure and all residents of Victoria Key didn't know what was happening. It was just one small sign tied to a lamppost. And when we did register our concerns, it was literally 24 hours. Uh, and then uh, Rachel has kindly worked with us so other people could speak, but it's still not satisfactory for the number of residents that live there. This is going to have a huge impact on our lives. And I'm not saying I don't want to see some of the community there because I do. But, but not of what's been planned, obviously. I don't know what the legalities are of this. Obviously, you've got your legal representative there. I'm not sure whether, you know, legally we should be asking for a stay now. Um, well, in, in short, Miss Lloyd. Say, you're saying we can't, that's what you're saying, is it? Well, no, I think, I think the application has been made properly. The officers have acted in, in the correct manner. Um, and the only persons who, well, you've also corrected that, you've also complied with it because you're here giving, having given your rep and giving your oral representation. I don't think you're prejudiced in any way. And we can't speak on behalf of people who aren't here who haven't provided the information they need to do so within time. So I, respectfully, I think you should provide your representations, which you, you've started to do so. As I said in the opening, all comments will be taken into consideration. Um, I think that all you can do is provide your information now and, and the members will consider it when they deliberate. OK, thank you. I do feel as biased. I do feel as biased against the residents of Victoria Key. I'd like that noted.
Have you got any other information you wish to expand on your letter? Uh, no, I made my representation on the main points, the four objectives you say need to be satisfied. And I don't feel that tourism will be satisfied, public nuisance and public disorder. Can I ask you which tool do you feel in strongly about, please? Uh, the prevention of public nuisance. OK. And um, public disorder. Crime and public disorder linked to the grant of the license. It's the licensing hours seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 11.30 in a residential area. And let's not forget that when this cafe was first built, there, there, um, there was no planning in the initial design. It was just a coastal park. Then the cafe was sneaked in. Um, and now it's not a cafe. It's going to be uh, a licensed bar and restaurant. Unlimited with unlimited music unregulated up to 500 people outside the windows of a residential area already there's loads of people there looking in we lack privacy and who can the glasses oh yeah <laughs> and who can actually say that this area is going to be pleased because people when they come into the cafe they don't know that it's a separate entity to the coastal park they don't know that at all people are sitting outside um, I think initially Mr Hose said it'd be plastic glasses, but they certainly weren't on the weekend. There were glasses, people were wandering around with pint glasses. And it, it's difficult for us as residents living there with this 24-7. And it's winter time now. Um, what happens when the summer comes? Are there going to be glasses and rubbish thrown over the park wall? We've got crime disorder on the marina as it is. The anchor have had terrible trouble there with fighting and people drinking all hours. Mm -hmm. Same with the Riverside Cafe. We've got lots and lots of licensed premises on the marina. So the objection really is, how can you satisfy that there won't be public nuisance and crime disorder? I don't feel that you can. And Mr Holder said that he will have possibly a bodyguard um, I say bodyguard, a protection person inside the cafe. That's fine, but he still hasn't really got the legal rights to police the rest of the coastal path. And what about the safety of children? You said children, children with glass around. That's a huge thing, isn't it, as well? It's not safe, it's dangerous. This coastal park has been set up as a sort of family environment, and therefore that cafe should be catering for families. You don't really need alcohol. I'm sure Mr Hall has taken notes of your comments and perhaps he can address them when it comes to his section. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hyde. Um, is it Mr Evans who's going to speak on behalf of... Sorry, Ms. Lloyd, do you have anything to say? You wish to say? Uh, oh, I, you've given me my written representation. You know the points that I'm concerned about, so thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lloyd. Um, Mr Evans, I understand you made your speaking on behalf of Miss Barry and Miss Stabeth. Yes, good morning. I don't know who else has got the microphone on. Perhaps we can be. Can you hear me now, please? Yeah, good. Right. Apologies for that. Not as technically or fair as some of it, my kids. Right. Uh, I concur with everything that uh, uh, Alison has said. Uh, and my apologies if uh, I don't follow all the rules and regulations with regard to a committee like this. I've been never served on before. But uh, whereas I concur with everything she said, I do have a number of objectives, but before I come to those, I do note with all the councillors here and all the worthy work they do, I do note that the council for the marina area where the green room is located is not present. Were they invited or uh, is it a voluntary thing or can you advise me of that, please? Um, Mr Evans, it probably wouldn't be appropriate that a, a member within um, decide upon a, a licence within their own area. And it's, it's specifically that members from other areas do um, do attend um, officers or sorry members from areas can give representations in many other committees those members do um, and as you're aware that no further representations have been received so 
Okay, no, thanks. Thanks for that. It's probably something we should have done. But like I say, given the notice we had, which was, as you see, complied with all regulations, walking around and not seeing a notice on the lamp post was our mistake. And we don't buy the evening post these days, you know, everything's online. So it's not easy to comply with all the regulations, given it's a 20, 28 days notice, which is the statutory requirement. Uh, I've had issues with other 28 day notices in the past, and I, I think that uh, the whole situation should change where anybody in a residential area where uh, it's anything being proposed having an impact on them, there should be at least a little notice put through the doors of those uh, premises concerned. Mr. Evans, Mr. you're here now, and perhaps we can hear your reps then. Okay, right. If I go on general objectives, uh, I can, as Alison said, I do not believe that this should be granted. There's no precedent in any other park environment in uh, On the main notice approaching the bridge north of the Mumbles Road, there's a, uh, a sign there and it says a pavilion cafe is proposed for the park, creating a focal point for experiences where technology and nature meet in a unique place. And I don't think having a, a licensed premises there uh, just doesn't concur with that statement. Um, all the other parks in Swansea, Bryn Mill, Cundonkin, St Thomas, the only other park, the only park which has got any form of license, and that's limited to special events, is Singleton. And we know the fantastic events the council put on there, and they all work well. Uh, the nearest that I can see to an equivalent would be Black Pill Playground, where there's a lovely playground for the kids there, the equivalent to the one on the coastal park. There's a cafe there that serves meals. I do not believe that is licensed. Also, the green room has been built in a highly residential area. And like you say, it was not part of the original plans. It seems to have been added at a later date. I concur that it is a very good facility and something I visited and we've used ourselves. It's great to have, it's great to see the families there enjoying themselves and I long may, concur, may, may continue. But again, I don't think having a licensed premises there with all the other licensed premises that are in Marina, I do, don't, do not think it's necessary. It is, as it's been said many times, a park environment. Um, with regard to the noise element which comes under your prevention of crime and disorder or the disorder and public nuisance we already have a uh, disruption and noise in the area now besides the sort of building and uh, and all the construction work that's happened now that it's opened and all that calmed down the playground there although it's not part of the uh, pavilion green room itself right alongside there are unamplified pipes there which kids play are causing huge disruption to people living in Victoria Quay. I know three people there that work from home doing online courses in yoga, meditation and music teaching, believe it or not, and they are, even with the windows closed, cannot continue their lessons. And that is an unamplified um, industry plaything that the kids come along and just raise levers and it just gives a wonderful noise for the kids but sighted in the wrong place but given that you can have unamplified music the equivalent has already been experienced by residents and it is, it is not comfortable at all so to have that along with further potential anti-social behavior with people work um, having alcohol in the bright weather in the summer when that comes i do not I don't think it's going to be conducive to their work or to their mental health. This is, after all, uh, the building of the green room itself is approximately 50 metres from people's windows with, as it stands, no barrier uh, for sight or sound. Excuse me while I can duck my notes. Uh, also, part of the application by Mr. Hull 
um, it says that the, the whole of the uh, pavilion green room is going to be food led. So I don't see why they need an off sales license or an outside license for that whole period. I know uh, there are other and why the music license needs to be that length of time either. Excuse me, sir. There's all one. Well, if we go on now, so you have my general views on why I believe that the and I or we believe that the license should not go Mr. on. Mr. Evans, um, I, I raised my hand earlier when you were referring to the park, and obviously the park isn't relevant to this application. Um, you heard in the opening that each application is on its own merits. So the noise from the park is not relevant to the green room application. Um, on that basis, I've been, if you like, for want for a better term, I've been giving you sort of extra rope because, again, in the opening, it was set out. What you should be developing is what is in the written representations. So I think you're going to go deviate from what is within these reps if you're about to give you a general views. Um, so I'd, I'd, I'd ask you to be cautious and not, and not deviate from what has been written by Miss Lloyd is what you should be developing only. But I'll, I'll let you continue and we'll, we'll see where we go. <clears throat> OK, thanks for that. But I do think that the, those pipes in particular are relevant because they are. Exactly. You've covered that. We've covered that. Let's, let's move on. OK, then. right. To, to go into the actual licensing objectives uh, for the prevention of crime disorder, other than you use the terminology within your forms, other than off sales institute containers, no glassware, glass bottles to be taken outside the building by patrons off the premises. When I was there on uh, Saturday lunchtime having a coffee while queuing to order my coffee, um, Coffees were being ordered and delivered by waiters and waitresses to the tables outside. Whereas anybody waiting not wanting hot drinks, if you wanted cold drinks, they've been called, people were being called forward in the queue because they were quicker to serve. People were being served uh, pints and wine on tray in, in glasses, on trays to be carried out directly outside by the customers themselves. That doesn't comply with being in a child friendly environment. Being outside. So, under the Prevention of Crime and Disorder and the other objectives of public nuisance and protection of children, that definitely does not comply. If you're going to have consumption of alcohol and it's going to be permitted in the outside area, the outside area in the green room is approximately uh, seats, I would say, twice the number of people inside the area. So there's going to be a lot more noise outside than inside. I think that is real disruption for anybody living nearby. Especially if it's going to go on till the, for the hours asked for. And if any consideration is going to be consideration is going to be given to this license, I would insist that those hours are grass, drastically reduced. I know of other uh, licensed establishments which have got music, live music, and they are for very limited hours. I love live music. I would happily attend, but I would not like to impose that my thoughts and my live music on anybody else that's happened to be living nearby. It says any, I know I would insist as well that the survival of alcohol, it's a, as, the, uh, as the initial application said, it's going to be a food led business. Food is going to be delivered outside. So the supply of alcohol should also be, be delivered outside to people sitting down by waitresses. And again, when they're having food and to use something that was said earlier on in the, during the pandemic, it's not a scotch egg. It is a proper meal and it should be in plastic, not as I witnessed on Saturday people walking out with pint glasses and a and a donut. And it should only be you know, people sitting down. Also, um, it's been explained to me 
that as part of the license as well, you can serve up until the hours as quoted. But it doesn't say when those uh, is if there's going to be a drinking up time or a final time that people have to clear the area. So somebody could raise a uh, order a large round of drinks and sit outside and be within the license to carry on drinking until stay in there until those drinks are finished. So I would ask that if the license is going to be considered that there is a clearing up time of a suit of half an hour after the final time and I would. I'd leave it to you, but personally I would say eight or nine o'clock at, at night at the latest. Otherwise, that's going to cause disruption to anybody working shift work, anybody working outside. Uh, I think that's more or less covers all my points. So thank you for your patience and thank you for your leeway in allowing me to speak. Thank you, Mr. Evans. So <coughs> now we go to the applicant. And there's any questions? questions. Um, yes. To Do any of the councillors have any questions for um, either Ms. Mr. Evans or Ms. Lloyd? Please. No. Well, thank you, Chair. No. no. Um, Councillor Philip Hortons. Yeah. Thanks. Just some uh, matters for clarification, please. Um, if we could just go to um, Miss Lloyd first. Um, I just, do you mind if I ask you how long you've lived in the marina? Uh, thanks. Five years. And during that time, you know, have you had any any other issues? The reason I'm asking you is because this we when we look at each license and application, we have to make a determination based on whether it's going to be that application that is going to make a difference to your lives or whether it is the other. You, you've mentioned yourself that there are quite a number of other license uh, premises in the area. So for me, it's what difference will this application make further to the other to, to the other licensing applications that are there? Do you understand what I mean? It would have to be specifically. Sorry, I just wanted to explain to you why I was asking this is a question. It would have to be specifically what difference the green room would make to your life because you haven't actually you've been predictive you said this will happen and that will happen but it's why you actually think it would happen so because of the close proximity of the green room it's literally right opposite the kitchen window of, of where i live and the noise level already is horrific We've already suffered several years of huge, massive disruption with the building of that site that's driven people absolutely mad. And now we we'll face the possibility of having unregulated live music, possibly licensed alcohol being sold on and off until 11.30 at night. It's going to be untenable for our way of life. Disruption is horrific. Um, if, if you could just come back then. To, I've got a question for this time as well, but from looking at the, the diagrams that we've got and the plans, um, yeah. I can see that you're, you, you've got the road, a car park, what was the wall, but obviously the green room is level to the top of the wall, but then you've got the park and before you get to your property. So although you're saying it's right opposite, to my mind, you must be 50, 60, 70 feet away from the green room. Possibly, but that's huge proximity, isn't it? Right outside your own window. And as I think Mr Evans mentioned earlier, 50 metres possibly from the green room maximum. And the noise and distraction, we've already had skateboarders out there across the park with the people drinking out there. You know, it's been untenable, the whole situation with skateboarders, cyclists coming all around there. The whole, I know what you're saying, the park and, and the green room are separate, but they are intrinsically. Um, we have to it, treat it though. This is it. We have to treat it as separate. And because we are looking at the four license and objectives for the green room and any issues that come from the park, 
would be regulated by somebody else. And obviously, music isn't regulated. I am going to ask Mr. Hole later on where he will be playing the music. So, but but you know, perhaps to just to, to sort of, you know, but but that was I just needed to sort of like find out from you whether there were specific issues because there are many other licensed premises in the area. So yes. so thank you for your answer. Um, to that, Ms. Philpott, in the fact that skateboarders and cyclists are actually drinking in that park. That's that's the issue here. Um, and I don't see how that can satisfy the objective. That's a public nuisance right outside residents' windows. And they can't separate that from the cafe. They're buying the alcohol in the cafe. And then when uh, Mr. Holder's host is still out there drinking, as Mr. Evans said, that's a huge public disturbance for us and public nuisance. And we, we've got to live there. We live there every day. We're living with that. Have you visited the premises? It has to be that you'd have to be specific that those drinks were being bought from the green room. They could be being bought from if it's a skateboard. Could have gone to Tesco, do you know what I mean? So you, you have to be quite specific, I would have thought. Can I also just I saying something about you said that um there's been, you know, that nobody's had enough time to be able to put, you know, the, the comments forward. That where there have been very contentious applications that there would be many people have come forward within the time limits that have been specified and they have come forward with 50 60 70 maybe over a hundred objections so the fact that nobody has within the time limit, given the same thing objects, just to reassure you that maybe other people don't have things to uh, I would say um, to you that is not the case at all. Nobody realised what was going on. All we were given was a sign and a lamppost and luckily one resident saw it. If that resident hadn't seen it, myself and Mr Evans wouldn't be here. And what happened then was I made a representation to um, uh, Rachel and said on behalf of all residents of Victoria Key, but because I didn't have the correct licensing hours down for Mr Hole, my application was brought back. And in the panic to get things done, I mentioned in particular a couple of residents' names because names had to be given according to the guidance of who wanted to speak. I made it quite clear that there were lots of other residents. As Rachel knows, there's been numerous emails going back and forth between all of us. We were lucky to see that license uh, application at all. Just one little notice tied to a, a, a lamppost. That, that lots is of people really don't live there. Lots of these flats are rented out. There's, there's one of our management committee living up in both wells. She didn't know there was a license stuck stuck there. Flyers should have been given because of the impact this is having on our lives right outside our windows where we live. The courtesy Swansea Council should take it upon themselves to inform all residents exactly what was going on and the licensing hours that were being applied for. As Mr Evans said earlier, now lots of things are online. We've got lots of elderly residents who don't go online. Evening Post, as we said before, isn't available in the way it was for so people. People don't read it the way they did. It was purely by luck that this particular resident saw that sign and alerted me and I was actually able to do that as quickly as I did, just so that we could speak. And it doesn't mean to say people aren't interested. It's a huge swell, as Rachel knows. Look at Mr Evans from Penn Rice. Court has written to you, Rachel. Everybody is very, very upset about the way this is being handled, which is why I asked at the beginning for a stay. Because people are not happy. It's a huge groundswell of upset, which you're totally underestimating you. I can, I can only go by other applications that have come forward and there has been a huge amount of written representation, which there hasn't been in this case. So I just go on to Mr Evans, please. So, Mr Evans, just to pick up a couple of points on you. Um, you mentioned that there's no precedent been set in any other park. But I would remind you that there is, uh, you've got the, it used to be called the pub on the pond, I think it's called the inn on the lake now. It's uh, Swansea, it's the boat in lake. So so we have got that, we, we've got that uh, example there. Um, so, uh, and again, it was just to sort of say about the uh, unamplified music that it is deregulated. So, thank you. Uh can I just back on one point on that with you, please? What's the nearest residential property to the pub on the pond? The, the re 
you, you didn't actually mention the residential at the time, and I take on board what you say, Mr. Evans, but I just wanted to say that there was an example of a licensed premises within a park. Okay. Uh, if, if I can take one thing back as well, uh, if you look at the area on Victoria Quay, the main walkway is on the side of the marina. Uh, I'll just ask, Ms. Oig, yes. where, where was the uh, notice? Was that on the marina side? No, no, it was just on um, further up. There's one notice on a lamppost halfway at the parking area, just below the wall. Um, so, wait, sorry, excuse, um, me, excuse me, excuse um, me. Um, there's no order here, okay? Um, Mr. Evans, Miss Lloyd, you're both speaking at the, at the same time, okay? Um, Ms. Millport has asked, asked questions and, and you're responding with questions. Um, effectively, this should be for clarity as to what has been put in the document. You've gone both way over what's there. Um, there's been misinformation as well. Um, Mr. Evans, the, the Blackpool Lido, there is a license there. You advise that there isn't, okay? Miss Lloyd, you're referring to the park. There is a public spaces protection order covering the park. If you have issues with the skateboarders, the bicycles, or other people are consuming alcohol in that park, I think you should look on the local authorities website and there will be the proper places for you to contact to raise those concerns. We have, have deviated quite a long way from what is the purpose of this application and or the objectives relevant to the application. OK, um, I'll pause. I know Councillor Lloyd has his hand and may have some comment to make also. Also, it may be that a lot of what has been queried by yourselves covered by Mr Hull and as you're aware from my opening I said out that there would be a discussion and perhaps what you've already said should have been party to the discussion but what I will say now is please don't repeat what you've already said um, if it's already been answered. Councillor Lloyd. Um, it's the legal officer has just said it for me thank you chair. It just we, we're just repeating what we've already heard and, and discussed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So now we go to Mr. Hall. Mr. Hall, perhaps you'd like to explain to us um, your proposals for the area? Yeah. yeah. Um, can you hear me OK? I think Mr. Lloyd has still got a microphone on. There we are. Thank you. Mr. Evans, I think. Okay. Thank you. Should be OK now. OK, great. Um, yeah, I think first of all, a lot of the residents concerns are also our concerns. Um, I've met the residents privately prior to this meeting to, um, to kind of get some feedback on what they were thinking. Things like public order, uh, nuisance behaviour within the park are also concerns of ours. And, and I think that kind of like us being there will be a deterrent rather than encouraging public order behaviour. Um, you know, we're, we're a premium priced venue. Um, I don't I don't think you buy a, a pint of alcohol under £5.50. That was specifically purposely done. That's not, we're not trying to encourage kind of like, you know, a younger market or, or, or someone to come and have like six, seven, eight, nine, ten drinks. It's kind of like one or two with your meal. Um, hence the price point is we've got another venue and I'm not sure if you're aware called the Secret Beach Bar and Kitchen on Swansea Bay and it's exactly the same. We we premium price the beer on purpose or the alcohol on purpose um, because we don't want to be that type of venue. We don't want to be a, an, an alcohol led venue where people will come and drink all day. We, you know, we, we're not showing sport or anything like that. Um, obviously, I take on Mr Evans point about parks. Um, I did know that Junction actually has got a license and I think that's the most comparable park, if you like, because it's not a kind of like traditional Bringwell Park or Victoria Park. Um, but we are also obviously right next door to a to Swansea Arena. Um, which obviously is licensed and we, you know, and, and a proportion of our market will be visiting us prior to um, to, an, to an event there. But um, yeah, in, in regards to the antisocial behaviour, you know, I completely agree and, and we, we want to work with the residents rather than against the residents in terms of policing that part ourselves, probably above, and, well, definitely above and beyond what we, what we should or, 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 or could be doing, you know, um, to ensure the last thing we want is our customers feeling intimidated or, um, by, by people kind of like drinking in the park or anything like that. Um, I think the fact that we've been trading on a temporary license, hopefully has given some of the residents some comfort that of, of what we're trying to be and what we're trying to do and the, and, the, and the person we're trying to attract. You know, we haven't had kind of like 
any antisocial behaviour there so far. You know, we haven't been open until our licensed hours. Um, it is very much kind of like a, a certain type of crowd we're trying to attract. Um, and as we said in our application, it, it will be food led. We've got an issue with the gas at the moment. Swansea Council have had, a, have had an issue with in terms of the connection, but that's just been sorted this morning, actually. So, um, so we'll be looking to launch food uh, just after the Easter holidays. In relation to just a couple of points uh, noted from Mr Evans and Miss Lloyd, in relation to the glass, um, personally, I feel that it, it'll be a positive to use glass outside. And the reason for that is that, um, you know, when people are drinking plastic drinks outside, they're more they're more likely, obviously, to litter, to take away the drinks. Although, you know, obviously, we we we'll try our best to stop them, but um, but you know, taking away the grants, litter in the park, and um, you know, with glass, there are glasses which cost us money. So you know, we'll be we'll be extra responsible for policing that and making sure that it doesn't leave our kind of boundary area. Um, oh, oh, any other? Yeah, and I think I think that's about it for me. I kind of like you know, as I said, I share the I share the concerns of the residents, and we'll be looking to. Um, work with the residents, you know, I've, I've already offered my mobile phone number and the manager's mobile phone number um, to work with the residents to stop any antisocial behaviour. I think as um, Ms Philippot said earlier on, obviously someone can go, go to Tesco's and, you know, these, these kind of state skaters or cyclists you talk about, can go to Tesco's and buy a, buy a slab and beer and come and sit in the park and, and drink it. And, and what we hope is that by us being there and our presence, that it would kind of actually put people off doing that a la kind of like Castle Gardens really. Um, you know, it's the last thing we want is that is that area to turn into something like that. And you know, we have we it was one of our kind of like massive negotiation points with Swansea Council when we originally secured the lease was that you know would it be policed? Would it be would there be rangers patrolling? Would you be moving these people on? Because the last thing we want to do is it to turn into a kind of haven for homeless and antisocial behaviour and you know youngsters kind of like they're late at night drinking and, and cause themselves a nuisance. So we want to work with those residents in terms of like counteracting that and, and dealing with that. Um, the best we can. OK, thank you for that. Um, Councillor Philpott, you've got a question for Mr Hole. Yeah, just a couple of questions, Mr Hole, for clarification. The first one, um, you'd be aware that uh, there are conditions for um, the noise of bottles, etc, etc. I've looked on your plan, I can't see where you've been in stories. Is it inside or is it outside? I was looking at page 22 or 32 is that? And it can't, it's it's a good plan, but it shows everything by the bin store. Yeah, so it's just outside. So um, the bin store is, have you been to the park? No. Oh, okay, it's, um, it's, on, it's on the Tesco oh, side, not the resident not, side. Not into you, uh, not into you, I've been to the park, but not have on you, your... We've been to the coastal park. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen the ping pong table? Right. So is it there? They, yeah. Yeah. Just alongside there, it's built in a fenced um, cage, if you like, which has kind of like got a living wall on it and stuff. And that, that is the bin store. So I'm just thinking about because of, obviously the residents have got they've got concerns about noise and what have you. So you know, I'm just wondering whether there is a leeway for not using it because the bins are outside that they're not used after perhaps an earlier time at night to be able to, you know, keep it, keep it quiet. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I, think, I think that's in our application. I think we have got earlier hours for, um, you know, we purposely did include that with that in mind. Yeah, because I, if you say that you're not going to be using, that it's only going to be pay one or two drinks and things like that, you're not going to have a huge amount of bottles maybe after a certain time anyway, so they could, you know, really be kept inside and then you know to stay disturbance in the evening not to be used before a certain time I mean it's eight o'clock in the morning it's not too bad but later on at night for me 11 o'clock if I get to hear bottles going in it's very quiet at that time and it can really make a difference to somebody's well-being when your piece is being shattered you know just by bottles being thrown in are you with me so maybe yeah. we can sort of like think about that um your sorry, I was just going to rattle off all the questions I was. Is that all right? Yeah, from my point of view, yeah. Yeah. So 
I hear what you say about the glasses, that the, your glasses, you'd be watching them, but I still really do have a concern about uh, using real glass in proximity to the park. You are very, very close to the park. And um, I know you say you're high end, but you can get really high end, good quality polycarbonate uh, cocktail glasses and what have you that becomes through the possibly more expensive sometimes than what real glasses be really difficult to, to tell the difference and personally I would have thought that being responsible you would use if any glasses are being taken away from the premises but say that you would use polycarbonate given the proximity to the park. Don't you don't you feel that would kind of like increase litter in the park potentially? Well, no, because what you'd be using, you wouldn't be using your sort of like throw away. I mean, there's all different sorts of plastic glasses, isn't there? <coughs> Buy for 20, for, I don't know, two pounds or whatever in a supermarket. But there's the ones that are really high end and you would not want those to be going. I mean, people could just take glasses away, couldn't they? You know, if they like the, the yeah. shape glass they can say oh well I'm gonna slip this in my handbag or whatever so you've still got glasses walking off the premises so I think that you know if glasses are going to walk then I think it is better that it be a polycarbonate glass that's walking. It goes our whole business model obviously being called the green room I don't know if you know and I've seen our kind of like business model but we, we want to be carbon kind of like negative um, so so we've got you know we're working towards that um, and improving kind of like week by week and taking advice because we, you know, we're not, you know, we've got, we've got pretty much, no, well, we're going to have by the end of year pretty much no plastic at all in the whole venue. So the milks will come from a, from an urn, which is filled up under the counter um, every day. And it kind of like, you know, we're trying to be as kind of like sustainable as, as we possibly can. So to use plastic, we'll go against kind of like everything we're trying to do um, as an, as a venue from a sustainability point of view, you know? But I, think, that, I think the experience from the customer as well will be will be more negative. And then I feel that the litter in the park would be would be would definitely be more than because 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 our lease conditions like don't get me wrong. Like obviously we we would go above and above this, but our lease conditions that we only actually look after a meter out of in terms of litter, a meter out of um, out of our our boundary in terms of clearing and stuff. So it wouldn't be our responsibility to to clear the park if if you know those glasses. I know, I know there is better quality ones now, but they do still. They could even be, you know, if someone leaves them on the table, for example, outside. They can be picked up from the wind on a windy day, and they could be blown around the park, and we can't control that. And also, it's not in our lease conditions to actually to actually go and clean that. Then, albeit we, you know, we, we would if we could. But with some sort of, you know, if the wind is going to blow a heavy plastic polycarbonate glass, it's going to blow a glass glass as well. And bearing in mind that there is an energy source required to make glass glass. I think, you know, I understand what I you're the waste, obviously the polycarbonate would be. I assume you're talking about the disposables. No, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about disposables. I'm talking about the ones that are really, really high end that you would not want. They, they're probably more expensive in some cases than, than glass. So these would be sustainable because you buy them once and they would be, you were, your sort of like stock glasses. Of, of a very high quality um, that you wouldn't want, you wouldn't be using them as takeaway glasses. These would literally be what you were using to be responsible for outside use and you wouldn't have to use them inside, but for outside use that you then have something that is totally unbreakable. And when you're looking at children, you're looking at the safety of children and the safety of adults as well, because Given its uh, proximity to the to the bay, you have people with uh, sandals, maybe no shoes. I don't know. So you know, I, I just think because you're an outside, because you've got the outdoor venue, I'm not sure what what happens at the secret garden. Um, but you know, I do think that it is worth the consideration, given how many people as well this morning have raised the issue that it is worth consideration um and yeah. sorry I think, I think as you just touched on there at, at the secret we've got um, as you can imagine it's just right on the seafront so we've got a huge traffic of young people and things going past we've never ever had an issue so we're glass outside there we've never ever had an issue with anything um at all in regards to kind of like 
you know, I, I assume your concerns is obviously glasses smashing and then and then youngsters or adults um, walking in that. But we, you know, we've never had that issue. And I, yeah, and I kind of like it in. And uh, I remember after that, can we, can, can, sorry to stop you, but you, you have had a bit of time. Can we take a, call, um, a, a question from Councillor Lloyd and I'll come back to you? OK, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Well, much of what I was, wanted to ask has just been covered and responded to. But um, yeah, my con only concern really is, is about the glass versus um, plastic outside the building. And um, mm, I can see both both sides of the coin, but I'm leaning more towards the safety issue. So my question would be, you know, in terms of the stewards, to you, Mr. Hall, in terms of Stewards, and would you have somebody um, whose job would be only to collect collect those glasses regularly, or make sure that the staff are well aware that you know keep on top of this? That's my question. Then, thank you. Yes, we yes we have that anyway. So we employ glass collectors um, day to day, so people who run drinks and collect drinks. But obviously, on 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 big event days, pre events, um, pre gigs in the arena. Sorry, then that. The volume of, of staff and glass collectors will increase. You know, the last thing we want from an aesthetic point of view is to have glasses kind of everywhere scattered around. But also, as you you know, I share your concerns about safety and it's something that we will, you know, we are, we have been so far and will continue to work hard on. Um, as I said, you know, we've been trading on a temporary license for yeah. a month now and obviously haven't had an issue at all. Um, so so you'd, up, you'd up your level of staff in uh, allowing for what's going on around, yeah? Definitely. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for I'll do my questions after you. OK. <laughs> it was only just one question for reassurance, okay. I think. Sorry, did you say for me to speak, Chair, or not? Yes, yes, please. Yeah. So, oh, this whole other music is deregulated for reassurance. Where, if you are indeed going to play music, where would it be played? Would it be outside or would it be inside? Yeah, so for a start, that would be sporadically. Um, it's something we're looking at. If you, uh, you you said you hadn't been into the venue, had you? Um, for for those who had, there's a there's a there's a pink tiled wall um, as you walk in. So yeah, 100% the the music would be played inside and not outside, um, and it would be very much kind of like acoustic style. You know, this the venue's small. It's not there's no room for like there won't be bands or anything like that. Uh, put it that way, it would kind of be like acoustic with a guitar or a singer. But we're also interested in things like, you know, part of, again, our, our tender process of the council is that we want to be, provide a venue which kind of like, you know, artists, poets, spoken word, comedians, and music's only a, a proportion of that. Um, right next to the arena, we're kind of like the aspiration that one day they'd be able to play in the arena. So that was all part of our tender process is what is the venue we're trying to create. Um, so it wouldn't just be music, but that music would be definitely inside and of an acoustic kind of like style rather than a heavy metal or, or, or rock band or DJ or anything like that. You know, that'd be, that'd be way off what we're trying to do. Um, Miss Lucemore, you wanted to say something, please? Yeah, if I could, Chair, um, with your permission, I just wanted to clarify the on and off sales points. Um, just, just a cl for clarification of all on the call. Obviously, an on sale of alcohol will be, uh, I think, what Mr. Hull is referring to, will be in glass, which is within the curtilage of its premises. So, if you look at the plan on page 33, you've got the red area, which actually shows the area that Mr. Hull will be serving glassware in, which is managed by them. And obviously, then if there's an off sale, uh, I'm assuming it would work uh, the same way as the uh, the secret does at the present, where that would be in a plastic. Uh, again, yeah. if it's all could clarify that, J just for everyone on the call to be aware of that. Is that okay? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, Mr. Hall, um, I've got a couple of questions for you. The first okay. thing uh, I'm concerned about is where is your smoking area going to be? Where are you going to be encouraging people that want to smoke to go? Um, so it's so it's around the arena side of the um, just before the if have you been to the premises? No, no. Um, so we got we got the main entrance on the on the kind of like on the park side, and then it's 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 on, it's on the left, kind of like opposite Tesco's, if you like, on that area there, which we're just about to create a, a blocked off area. 
So in relation to the people living there, we're talking about people smoking on the other side. That roadside yeah, as yeah. opposed to the residence side. Mm -hmm. right, I, I just wanted to clarify that for yeah. the residents. The yeah. other thing, I've got a huge problem with glass going outside and children. Um, I have actually seen people get hurt because a glass has fallen, a little one's been running around, run into the glass without realising. This is something that I think we we could be um, perhaps accommodating on by agreeing on some form of glassware that isn't actually glass, but is for your purposes reusable. Okay. Um, now, if, if that was put as a condition, because I think that's something that we could possibly look at. Not that we're going to, but it's a possibility. Um, would you be able to accommodate that easily? Perhaps, perhaps before Mr. Hull answers. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mr. Hull, what, what I perhaps would propose before your closing submissions, if we if we took a short break, not not right now, but okay. shortly, okay. Um, it's a matter for you. Only you could potentially offer an additional condition. Um, you'll note that I think for most parties have, have referred to this point. Um, you don't have to, but perhaps in a gap you could give consideration. You could consider the high level plastic glass glasses that are available on the market, which perhaps may please certainly some of these concerns, but it's a matter for you, sir. Um, I'll, get, I'll take you back now to, to whether you wish to answer the, the member now or, or, or put it into your... Well, th this is the way I put it, the way I did, because the idea is that we work together on this to make yeah. it work for you as, as a business and the residents and the people of Swansea who will be using it. So th this is what we're trying to do, is work our way through these, these things that people are objecting to, to see if we can come to some reasonable solution that's happy for everyone. Yeah, I completely agree. And to be honest, I've got no experience at all of these high end glasses, uh, plastic um, containers that that you speak of. So I would need to kind of like look into it to understand kind of like a, you know, I guess there's a cost development, but but more more importantly, probably like things like, you know, can they go through our glass wash, for example, like how they're washed and then what that would mean operationally and things like that. Um, but if I can get a better understanding um, and availability of, of stuff. Sorry, I don't, perhaps I didn't make it clear. It's just the outside area. I, I personally am concerned about, and I'm sure the other councillors are too. Yeah. The inside area, we haven't got an issue with. It's the outside area. Yeah, no, I, I understand your concerns. Um, as I said, I, I don't know enough about the glassware or the, or the pretend glassware that you're talking about. So I need to un I need to get some more information on that before I can kind of like, um, I guess, accept it or not. But as I said originally, like you know, we, we're obviously keen to come up with a solution that works for everything. The last thing we want is people obviously cutting their feet and on on glass outside as well. So if you know, if there's if there's a solution, then you know, we'll definitely look into it. So we're going to open it up. Mr. Hall, do you have anything further you want to 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 add at this point? Uh, no, but but happy to take questions from anyone. There we are. Okay. So um, if the residents have any questions, Mr Holt, now is the time. If you could indicate, please, which one of you would like to speak first. By just raising your hand, your, your virtual hand. <laughs> the ladies on the Ms. Lloyd, you're on mute. Oh. Oh, <laughs> I think one of the points is that at the moment Mr. Hull's operating um, in the winter time, and obviously the summer's coming. And I know that the park, we're not discussing that because that's a separate issue, but it is intrinsically linked. And members of the public don't realise they're supposed to stay within his boundary, behave in a certain way within that boundary. And I also think it's a huge burden on Mr Hull to try and police the whole of that area and those people. I, I really think we need some kind of 
peace um, contribution here is what they feel they can do to help. Because once the summer comes, it's going to be a completely different ball game. It's going to be more children, more families staying out there. If the licensing um, is going to be uh, for longer hours and people will stay longer, be going on into the night and then different types of people will be coming in. And it's a huge ask Mr Ho to try and police the whole of that area. Because as a member of the general public, if you just go there, you don't know that's not one thing you don't know that there's a boundary or Mr Ho stops here and then you're crossing that line somewhere else and so I'd like to know who, who would be helping Mr Ho in that situation if there is disorder and problems who's going to do something about that and I think that the demographics Mr Ho is saying he's hoping to have uh, a more expensive clientele though the demographics are the people who are actually there using it now at the moment which are families um, and, and he's I think what you'd like to do is attract this uh, type of customer, but it doesn't seem to be the sort of people who are there now at the moment, although obviously they're a small part of it. And also, if I'd like to make another point, Mr Ho, Secrets is a completely different ball game because it's not in a residential area, is it? You know, it's not, it's not overlooked. You haven't got people's windows, you know, 20 metres away from your kitchens and, and where people are set, sitting, eating and drinking. You cannot compare Secrets. Mm. Uh, with what's going on here in the marina. It's a completely different ball game. Uh, also, at the end of the day, you're not going to turn people away if they want to drink because they're there to, you know, they're there to make money at the end of the day. You're not doing this cafe for, uh, you know, just joy. Yeah, you're doing it for your, for your business to make money at the end of the day. Thank you. Was that a question, Miss Lloyd, or do you have? Yes, well, it was a question as, as for Mr Ho, in as much as I think he probably needs help, doesn't he? If he's going to be trying to police this whole of the area, because the general public don't know where his boundary finishes and the park begins. They don't. They're going to just wander around where they like. Perhaps, then, Mr Hull, um, to finish that, and, and I know Miss Lloyd has set out that your your other establishment secret is not relevant to this, and I've said it myself, it, it, everything is his own merits. Although the secret does have um, posts and does that rope separated it from the promenade or anything? Is, did you propose yeah. to do anything like that in the green room? Yeah, we do, yeah, so we're actually waiting for planters to be built um, to kind of like link the outside area to show a real a physical boundary between um, yeah, yeah our, our area, not our area, basically. On that basis, therefore, um, is this going to be multiple points of entry or, or is there going to be one or? A single point of entry, yeah. Okay. There's, there's three doors currently, so how it will work, you'll have a point of entry, a point of exit, and then a point into what we're going to call the garden, which is obviously the boundary area. Um, so yeah, there'll be, there'll be three doors basically. Um, okay. One will be into the garden, which will be sectioned off, and the only, the only way you can enter the garden would be through the re through the cafe, um, rather than kind of like externally, if you like, to give us control on who enters and who who doesn't. And obviously they want that then alleviates hopefully some concerns in regards to like you know, randomly kids running past because they'd have to be physically in our area and actually, you know, kind of like dining or, or drinking in the venue. OK, uh, while I've got the floor, um, the door, those three doors you've got to, do, are they just loose or do they have openers closes on them? They got closes, yeah, they got closes. So they were closed behind them. Um, have you got speakers inside, outside? Inside, not outside. Okay. I think Miss Lloyd, I, I slightly hijacked part of your question. Um, I think Mr. Hall perhaps answered some of it, but you still have your hand up, so I'll return it to you, Miss Lloyd. Oh, so, well, it's just um, basically, are these objects going to be uh, met, you know, at the end of the day? We're living there, aren't we? 11 30, 11 30, Mr. Hall's saying that now, but as I've said, in the summer, there's going to be much more people around. It's going to be a different ball game, and it's just really, really worrying. 8 a.m., 11 a.m., I know Mr. Ho is saying he's not going to do certain things, but as time goes on, who knows? That's what happened at the anchor. They were granted a license like that, and they said they weren't going to do X, Y, and Z. And what happened as soon as they had the license? The license was there. There's nothing to stop Mr. Ho from um, having uh, deregulated live music and different things there if he felt like it, if the demand was there at all. And this is the problem, isn't it? We're living there. And once these licenses are granted, it's, it's we are the ones. And 
with respect to you, Miss um, Philpott, you, you haven't you admit you haven't even been there. You know, your life's not going to be affected by this, is it? Ours are. We are living with this every day. I don't think these, I don't think um, that you can satisfy public nuisance or primary disorder circuit at this stage. We've had COVID, we've got limited opening hours. It's going to be a different ball game this summer. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Lloyd. As I set out, all comments will be taken into consideration by the members in their deliberation. Um, and by no means has the decision been made anywhere. The whole point of this is for you and, and Mr Evans to have your opportunity to raise the points and equally for Mr Hull to comment to, and, and to put any mitigation forward as we can. Um, thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? Mr. Evans, did you yeah. want to say anything? It, it, I just, can you hear me? No, no I'm, I'm sorry. Let me turn this down. Thank you. Okay. Uh, One thing, I guess. Sorry if it's echoing here. Uh, still there we are. Apologies, technical difficulties. Uh, if there was any way I would I would be happier if the music was limited in time scale. Because it, it appears that we haven't answered the objectives as they should have been answered. So probably uh, get this delayed or get this overturned. Uh, I think it would have been better if people make the decisions had visited it because it's a central point, it's a focal point of the area. So the only thing I can ask is if the times for the music and serving of alcohol can be limited for a period to bed it in, see what the results are before we go forward whole scale with the full opening hours. Can I just quickly interrupt? Sorry. Um, we have had that though. So we've, we've been on a temporary license since we've opened on March the 15th. Mr Evans, have you experienced any any loud music or antisocial behaviour from the venue in that period, which has been in like a month now, I think. And obviously we've had gigs in the arena and, and what have you. No, not at all, but experience of the times that happened in the riverside in front of aurora across the front in the anchor they're not on a regular occasion but when they happen they create mayhem for everybody involved yeah i can't comment on those sorry I th I th yeah okay um i think everyone has um, concluded the matters i think the only point there um, again Sorry, someone's got a microphone on. Miss Lloyd, I'm going to turn you off. <clears throat> Just while we excuse me. So, yeah. um, of course, those other locations are separate. This application has to be dealt with, so merits shouldn't be tarred with others' brush. Um, but a point you raised, Mr. Evans, regarding uh, members having attended at sites, it's not a requirement. Um, site visits are not specific. The local authority and the like, certainly the licensing committee, um, whether it be the general or standard, deal with multiple um, applications for licenses. Um, on many occasions, they have not been present uh, or attended at those places. It, it, applications are refused when even when people have been there and when people have been not. Um, so it is not uh, an immediate requirement. Um, it, it is for the members to be provided a report as today information as today photographs uh, images maps and then listen to your representations as they have and as i've repeated many times they will take all consider all points um, into consideration um i think at this stage it's, it's for the chair to, to to say but for me matters have, have come to a natural end perhaps um if we were to have a break before mr hull's final summing up or, or unless you wish to do that. Yeah, unless you wish to do that now, Mr. Hull. Yeah, I, I don't personally need a break unless anyone else wants one. No, that's fine. 
Perhaps if you could sum up, Mr. Holt, what we can do then. We will be going into recess with Mr. Davis to make a decision, and we'll, we'll do that then. So we will have your summing up first, and then we'll go into recess and we'll convene then at a, um, a later time. No problem. And um, yes, to, yeah, to conclude, um, we are the last thing we <coughs> sorry, I mean, the last thing we want to do is work against the residents. We want to work with the residents and hopefully invite the residents as customers as well. Um, and we'll we'll do all we can to work with those residents to make sure that um, you know we, we've got that fluid relationship and any issues we can try and um, alleviate immediately. As I said, it, I'm definitely willing to provide my mobile number and the manager's mobile number of the venue for any immediate concerns. For example, if if there is <coughs> music too high or anything like that um and on another note i hope we can help in terms of um you know we hope to get onto the night we, we're talking about to rachel and licensing about getting onto the night net system linking with wine street and, and everything else so you know if there is anti-social issues um in the area we, we'll probably have a more kind of like direct and link to um to marshals pcos police um than kind of like residents having to ring 111 or anything um, so hopefully we can we can work together. If they have concerns, they can they can speak to us, and we can we can alert the authorities quicker than them. Um, in relation to glass outside, as I said, there will be a physical barrier um, around it. We're just waiting for those plants to get made by supplier at the moment, um, and we will have control of who goes in and out. Uh, I kind of like what's happening outside. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I know I know um, Miss Lloyd said about we can't control the customers who come, but obviously by premium price in our drinks, we do we do eradicate a certain demographic usually, generally speaking. Um, and as you said, there is there is families using it at the moment, and along with that continue, we, you know, we, we we want to we want we want it to be a family friendly um, environment. Hence, you know, kind of like where we are in the park and stuff. So we'd be very much encouraging um, families. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, are we going to make a decision this morning or um, we send it out? As standard, um, the authority has been it's been using well ha has the five days available to them to uh, notify applicants and, and uh, other persons of the decision. Um, I wouldn't expect that the decision. Well, it depends how, how long uh, we take in deliberation today um, because of course whether it's granted or refused, reasons have to be written. Um, I think for safety's sake, Mr. Hull and, and the reps should be advised that perhaps it's likely, because the five days would include today, it's likely that you should wait for, well, until Friday for the, the notification from the officers, just for safety's sake. Okay, that's fine. How, uh, how will you be notified? Sorry. Sorry, it's Good Friday. Sorry, it's Good Friday on Friday, isn't it? Um, the the licensing officers will notify yourselves. And and the residents. Yes. Yes. Verbally or by email. Pardon? Verbally or by email. Uh, it'll be in writing. Okay, great. Okay. Thank, Thank you all for attending this morning. Um, we have made notes, as you've probably been noticed all the way through, and we will be taking each point you've raised and um, seeing what, if anything, we can do to make things as, as easy as possible for everyone to work together. But thank you again for attending. Thanks very much. Bye bye. Thank you. See you.